right now, I'm sitting outside of my studio in Colorado. It's actually where I came up with the record title. A color map of the sun, what the last two and a half years of my life have been dedicated to. I wanted to make an album that showcased countless genres and countless time periods, but also have a very modern, powerful style and, and production to it. I needed to prove to myself that I could do it. The first place I went was Brooklyn, a studio called Studio G. You could just feel the history in the room, so I knew I was in the right place. Okay, now we're gonna roll it. I would bring in different musicians every day and work with them to compose pieces of music on the fly. I would work with each musician individually to get the, the sound and the performance that I heard in my head and then simultaneously would work with the engineer to craft the timbre and the sound of that instrument to emulate the time period and the genre and the sound that we were going for. Back to the, the organ thing. Yeah, Let me, yeah. I want to hear that one time with the organ part and yeah. like uh, the shaker. Two, three, uh. We were creating breaks. A break is a section of a song that is not cluttered with things like solos or vocals or whatever else. It's the repetitive bass groove of the track. That's the break. That's the foundation of hip hop. The biggest challenge I had was communicating my idea of less is more. Just play this one simple part. All I need is this chord on this beat. During that two weeks, we used as many different instruments as we could think of. Traditional instruments like horns, trombone and trumpet and strings, viola, viol, violin, cello, uh, upright bass, all the way to much more bizarre instruments like a trumpet violin, a harmonium, a nickel harpa, the inner workings of a music box, a resonator mandolin from the 50s, a toy piano, uh, a water phone, marxophone, I don't know, basically anything we could get our hands on. This on the fly break composition process was isolating each musician, working with them uh, one at a time and then bringing it all back together and I would conduct it to capture every different combination of these instruments that I'd potentially want to work with later. I've been smoking. During the recording session. Lots. Not lots. But uh... That was fucking John Lennon. <laughs> what this new Pretty Lights album is, is a modern production album created completely with gear and hardware 
that existed 40 years ago. Really, it's analog electronica in its purest form. The overall aim of these studio sessions as a whole was to create recordings that if I were to find them in the back of some record store, I would just completely flip over it. <laughs> Fucking sick. I really learned an incredible amount during these musical break recording sessions. I did not want it to stop because it was getting better every day, but I had to move on to, to the vocals. I was basically searching out blues singers, soul singers, jazz, folk singers, old or young, it didn't matter. It was just a, it was just about finding that that raw power. What I would do was hand them a piece of paper with lyrics typed out on it that I know could seem a little strange or goofy when just looked at on the page. But when sang with the right emotion and the right power, the right melody, they really had the potential of becoming something incredibly special. What it is we can't maintain. Go back to contain. Something is changing. hiding from zombies who's, you know, crying and got like a foot like ripped off at the same time and is like limping through a fucking cornfield and like trying to like get her grandkids. I mean that's what it sounds like but it sounds beautiful. It's a beautiful moment in time. This is gonna be awesome! This is a fucking wonderland. In the past, really, a huge part of making my records was, was digging for old vinyl. Uh, I'd literally take hundreds of samples and make them work together to create a Pretty Lights album. That's really how I developed my style. But now, on a color map of the sun, I'm so stoked about it, I'm literally making my own vinyl collection 
to sample from. <laughs> so what's happening here? This is where we take the tapes that we record everything on, and we put it into vinyl. Okay. It's getting cut, right? Okay. So in this whole crazy system, all this old school shit, where the tape then goes in this machine called a lathe, and you put a record on the machine, it doesn't have any grooves in it, so it's like a black mirror is what it looks like. And then it cuts the music into the record, and then there's a, a, a needle that you can like actually listen to it right after it gets cut, so it's cutting it and listening to it at the same time. When the Brooklyn sessions were all said and done, my jaw was literally on the floor. Like, we had done it. We had created a legit sound that sounded like it came from these other time periods and, and these all kinds of different genres. I had 28 two-sided full-length LPs of wax to sample from and it sounded legit. It really sounded like the 60s and the 70s. I had an amazing amount of material. Now it's time for me to get the scissors out. But it wasn't everything. So I went to New Orleans. The reason I went to New Orleans was because the culture was so rich, the musical culture especially. Second lines that spontaneously spill out into the street, musicians marching through the neighborhoods with every sort of brass and drum instrument. It's like a hundred year old tradition, you know, similar to a flash mob. That's amazing. I did not know for sure that I would be able to find these people. I got connected with this guy named Ben Jaffe, who owns and curates the Preservation Hall, also plays in the Preservation Hall Jazz Band, which is a, just a massive part of musical New Orleans culture. Ben explained to me that if I was gonna work with some of the best players in New Orleans, I really needed to be vouched for. I was so lucky that he was a fan of my music and was willing to vouch for me to these jazz legends. Jeff, slide around the ship. You know what I'm talking about. In Brooklyn, the only horn recording day was the last day, and it was the most fun I had. I needed to continue that process. The horn sections are so raw and so powerful in their sound and their melody that I very often use them as a tool to reach the pinnacle of energy in my productions, in my tracks. I got so lucky with the piano player that I got hooked up with. Brian Coogan, he really understood my philosophy of minimalism. It's more about the notes you don't play than the notes you do play. Almost every musician that walked through the door of the studio expected sheet music. I never had sheet music. It was always me either tapping out a melody on a keyboard and going from musician to musician and showing them and explaining to them what was going on. A lot of these musicians were extremely skeptical and a lot of musicians said that. What's going on here? This is, this is weird. I'm gonna be doing this like feeling things out and then jotting down a chord progression to be able to 
give you. It's not charted, but I'll be like, this is what we're playing. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Okay. A 15 person band in the room, and it was all about how you could play one melody line consistently and beautifully with the right pressure, the right volume, the right roll. At one point, the slide guitarist walked out after a 30 minute recording session and he was like, man, that was so hypnotic. Like, I didn't know what to expect. He's like, honestly, I was skeptical, but that was the coolest session I've ever sat in on. It was a massive compliment. The rain. Down on a song. Yo, you know this track, God's Gonna Cut You Down? I'm gonna cut you down. <laughs> Hear what I say. Take my hand, wash my shadow. It took me a full year to make this creative vinyl, and it was a success. I had everything I needed, but technically I had not even started producing this album. That was the point at which I went home to Denver and began working on this record. so inspired by what happened in Brooklyn when I used the modular synthesizer. Joel Hamilton, the engineer from Studio G, he was a massive inspiration in so many ways. One of the biggest ways was this love of modular audio manipulation. This record is stupid sick. I realized the potential of running signals, running music and voices through modules that manipulate them and make them sound dusty and dirtier and, and grimier, but all in this really gritty, true analog way. And that's the sound that I fell in love with.
I knew that synthesis and electronic sounds were going to be a huge part of this record, so I decided to not touch a single digital synthesizer. Everything had to be from this homemade box where I had to spend hours patching cables to find the right sound and then record it and then it was gone forever. If you can do the exact same thing in a computer, why do it? Why go through the effort? It was a challenge. I really wanted to learn how to use this in a musical way. produced in the past was sampling rapper hip-hop acapellas to accentuate the energy of the song. And I wanted to keep everything continuous. I wanted to keep everything unified. So I wasn't going to go sample some rapper acapellas. I needed to create them from scratch. Eli was in town for a show. He ended up coming over after the show and we just kicked it and he wrote a verse and threw it down on one of the tracks. Next generation, next will be the ones that come. Okay, okay. But your verse is so fucking hot. I'm like, trying, now I'm like, I'm like, now I gotta make a fucking rap album with Eli, man, because the shit is fucking. Dude, don't say that out loud. <laughs> What's wrong with that? The second time was when Talib Kweli was in town doing a show. I sent him a loop of the beat and was feeling it, and we made a track together. Hey, hey, hey. Hey yo, who running it? Showing you what the hunger is, the one that for the love of the heavy and a ton of rich. I created everything in a way that would emulate the sampling, the hip hop production process as closely as possible. Wax, vocals, musicians, synthesizers. I was really trying to take an inventory of all of the things that I needed to maintain my sound and my style that I had developed over the years while simultaneously pushing it and evolving it. A color map of the sun. I learned so much in the last two and a half years making this record from how to work with musicians and MCs and singers to production techniques to synthesis to what it takes to, to be involved in a project of this scope. I think that something beautiful and timeless was created. I'm really excited to move on and to push myself even harder and to create something even cooler. I want to take a moment and just breathe in and enjoy, enjoy the fact that a color map of the sun is, is now on my shelf. <laughs>